Hey, welcome back to Olive Boy Pens. I'm Olivier, your host and conductor of the ink train. Choo choo. Did you remember your ticket? Anyway, we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite fountain pens. Out of my collection of around 55 as of today, I've been selling and buying a lot recently, but I noticed that about 10 of them are kind of part of my core collection just because I love using them so much and they have either sentimental or monetary value that I want to hold on to. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm very excited to show you the mix of both modern and vintage pens that I've got as my top 10 of 2020 fountain pens. Let's get right into it. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is show you each of my top 10 favorite pens, and then uh, I'll do a quick writing sample, talk as briefly as I can manage about each one, and uh, yeah, and that'll be that. I do wanna note that uh, none of these are in any particular order. Um, it's like asking someone to pick their favorite child. Um, but I, I did I did plan this out in you know my my top ten. Some of them stick out more than others, and I did have a nice mix of vintage and modern, as it turns out. Starting from the far left, we have the Wall Eversharp Gold Seal Oversize in the Green Bronze Celluloid. So first and decidedly not the worst, we've got the Wall Eversharp Gold Seal Oversize. Now. This model is often referred to as a deco band, um, erroneously. This is actually not a deco banded model. It has the kind of rhombus bands, but I'll put a picture of what an actual deco band looks like. It's like a Greek keys type of deal. And that's the one that the modern version actually has on it. It's totally iconic and often more expensive than a standard rhombus band ones is. This one has a signature nib, um, which is just kind of a standard nib that ca came on here. It could either be in flex or in firm. This one's kind of a semi-flex, um, and it's a nice solid vintage fine. It's a lever filler, and it's actually a really big pen by vintage standards. It has a full number 20 size sack, so it holds about 2 milliliters of ink, and it just makes it for a great, comfortable, everyday writer. So enough talking, now a little bit of writing. So yeah, while this is not the smoothest pen I own, it is one of my favorite writers, uh, and generally just a beautiful pen to look at. I'm going to try to get a good close-up shot of it with the material, because it does have some really nice sparkle and depth. Next up, we've got the Schaefer. Pen for Men 3 in gray. So, the Pen for Men. A controversial name, perhaps, but a generally agreeable pen. I consider this the peak of what Schaefer ever produced, and you know, come for me if you want, but this is, I think, maybe the last really truly great Schaefer pen. It's a snap cap, which has loosened a little bit over the years, but it has this incredibly beautiful inlaid 14 karat gold nib, which is just absolutely iconic, I think. And on top of that, it is a snorkel filler, which you have this little knob at the back that extends out the front when you twist the blind cap. And then when you pull the piston back and insert it again, like a touchdown or a vacuum filler, it sucks ink up through the needle, which is the most ridiculously over-engineered design, but it allows you to not get any ink on the section at all, but still get a full fill. The tube also acts as a way to transfer ink from the ink reservoir, which is actually like a little sack in there, to the, to the, to the feed. Enough about that, now for some writing. I actually tend to use this pen posted.
Lovely pen. I'll always have it inked. Then we've got a Parker Duovac. That's a Duofold Vacumatic in the uh, green and brown laid tone finish with some transparency in between the, the stripes that I'll show you. Now, here's a fun one. This is a Parker Duovac. It's kind of a strange model because it is a Duofold, but it does use the famous Parker Vacumatic filling system. Uh, wherein you press the button a couple times while it's in ink and it sucks it up using a diaphragm at the back. You can't see the transparency particularly well right now, but I'll try to get a good shot of it and splice it in here somewhere. It's got the blue diamond at the top, which is kind of Parker's trademark. And what's truly special about this one in particular is the nib. So the nib on here is two-tone, which you do see in a fair amount of pens these days, but on this pen in particular, the plating is notoriously fragile. So the fact that this still has the silver and gold on there is pretty dang uncommon. Um, and I actually bought this nib separately to transplant onto this pen because it was one of my favorite design features. Like, look at that cool little V. Now, let's get right in with it. I also neglected to mention this is the senior model, which is the larger of the few that they made. So it's a very comfortable pen to hold, even if the section is seemingly pretty short. Next up, we've got an all-time classic, the Parker Vacumatic 51, or 51 Vacumatic, whatever you prefer, in a dark blue celluloid with a stainless steel cap. Now a pen that may need no introduction. This is the Parker 51. I've owned a couple of 51s, but this one is the one that stuck around for a couple of reasons. This is a super clean cap, which I, I got separate from the pen. This was the first pen I got at a flea market. I found this, I paid, I think, $40 for it and uh, sent it out to be restored by my friend Mike down in LA. And then I, uh, I had the chance to get my hands on a pretty beat up cosmetically Parker 51 broad nib and I swapped that into this pen, ground it down to an architect, and now it is just quite a swell pen to use. So not much to look at here, but the writing is where it really shines. Now, I do love a good 51, but when it writes like that, it wins extra points in my book. And that is why this makes the list. And for the last of the vintage pens, this is the beautiful Wall Eversharp Doric that I got at the San Francisco Pen Show last year in the gray shell second generation finish, which means it's a vacuum filler. Um, but it is not a gold seal model. So another vintage pen and our final one for this list, the Wall Sharp Doric, which was a pen that I wanted for a very long time and I found one at a reasonable price, had it restored, and now it will live with me until I die. Um, it's got this beautiful Art Deco design with all these beautiful facets. And this one isn't like the craziest model they ever made. It's not a particularly big one. It doesn't have a crazy nib. But it's beautiful, holds a lot of ink, and it's got this really, really nice fine manifold nib on it that can just write really, really well no matter what. It's kind of long and skinny, which I like. I relate to it. Um, and it's a cute little pen.
Let's get right in. Oops. I forgot to ink it. I really beefed it this time. Get a little dippy. Nobody will know the difference. Now, would I let go of this pen if I found the same one with an adjustable nib? Maybe, but until then, I love this. To start off our modern pens, we've got the Sailor Pro Gear Mini Kyushu in the just incredible many shades of pink finish and a 21 karat full size nib. Now, all the pens I've shown you up until this point have been Pretty conservative, very vintage looking. And then there's this guy, the <laughs> Sailor Pro Gear Mini Kyushu. Not only is it maybe the most ridiculous pen I have in my collection, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that, but it is one of the most comfortable to use because it is very short and thick and you can screw to post it. It's the same proportions as a Pro Gear Slim Mini, which is much more common but it has the full-sized grip section and 21 karat gold nib. The nib is swapped from my Bungu Box Pro Gear, which I'll show you later. Uh, it's a 21 karat gold extra fine, which I find actually really smooth and fairly wet, which I was kind of surprised by, but a pleasant surprise it was. So let's check it out. Is it the best everyday carry pen on the market? Okay, no, but it's pretty close. If it was <laughs> if it was a different color, maybe. But uh till then, it's my baby and I love it. Afterwards, we've got another sailor. This is the Bungu Box limited edition Tsuyukihari Pro Gear. So that's the pea soup uh, with a beautiful little Raden finial and uh, a sparkly and translucent barrel. Now, baby's older brother, the uh, Sailor Bungu Box collaboration, Tsuyu Hikari, hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, Pro Gear, full size, and just a really nice colorway. My favorite color is green uh, in all shades that it comes in, so I love the matching converter. Um, I love the two different tones of green, the transparent and the sparkles. I love the little leaf finial, which is uh, made out of radin, uh, abalone shell. And the nib is, like I said, not the original nib that came on here. It is quite a special one. It is a Naginata Togi medium fine, which I got off of a whole other sailor, um, just a standard black pro gear, and then I put the nib that was on here on that, and I sold it. Who cares? It writes incredibly. Now, I loved this pen before it had a Naginata Togi on it, and now uh, it's inseparable from me. It's always around, it's always inked, and I can't get enough of holding it, writing with it, and showing it to people. Now, for our final three, we have all German pens, this one being the Graf von Faber-Castell Intuition Platino Ebony Wood, which is a hell of a name and a hell of a pen. Here is the Graf von Faber-Castell Intuition. Not gonna say the whole thing again. It is very different from the last pen we looked at, but still a very cool pen. It is a snap cap with this big old platinum plated cap with a nice Graf von Faber-Castell logo. Love the clip on this one, very functional. And a cool one piece ebony barrel that's fluted and then it slightly dips in at the section as a grip. The nib is a beautiful two-tone 18 karat gold nib and the filling system on this one I will show you briefly 
is cartridge converter, but you can't access it from the front. You have to screw the back, and then the whole unit comes out the front. So that's so if you were to be filling it from an ink bottle, you don't want to dip the wood in there or else it'll stain. So that's a great way to get around that problem, I think. That aside, it is maybe the best writer in my collection in terms of just smoothness, bounciness, and overall ink flow. Now, of course, I had to skip writing with it, like, <laughs> as soon as I was gushing about how well it writes, but it just is one of those pens that I cannot stop writing with, and that is why it makes this list. And now, it wouldn't be an Olive Boy video if we weren't talking about, talking about the Lamy 2000. I almost don't even have anything to say about this pen. It is just so ubiquitous to me. like. It's my go-to recommendation when I'm at work. It is my go-to recommendation when I'm not at work. It is the Lamy 2000. It is the fountain pen to own. It's, you know, even with all these beautiful other pens, it's the one I depend on the most. Extra fine nib. I've had other ones. My Bauhaus one has a different nib, but extra fine nib 2000 really just gets the job done like nothing else. Favorite part about this pen. Okay, that's a lie, but it's a good part. Just that little good stuff. And the Dialogue 3, another frequent guest of my videos and comparisons, because it's so cool. And last but certainly not least, a pen that needs no introduction. If you've watched my YouTube channel, I realize that I talk about it a lot, because it's a cool pen. Dialogue 3 by Lamy. Full size, two tone, extra extra fine gold nib, big old honking hot dog body, and uh, a joy to use. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look into my top 10 pens. Uh, let me know if you disagree with any of my options. Um, if you like them, don't like them, just let me know. I, uh, I love talking, talking pens with y'all. Of course, this list is kind of subject to change uh, because I've gotten new pens since I recorded the actual, like, talk-through part of the video. A notable missing pen that will definitely be the subject of its own video is my brand new Sailor Rialo Demonstrator, uh, the Penpoint Rain Frog Limited Edition, so look forward to that in the next video. Also, I uh, just started an Instagram. I know my... Uh, Pen videos take a little bit while to come out because they, you know, they take a lot more effort, but I want to share some more just like photography and uh, short form pen related content on my Instagram for y'all to check out. Um, so I'll be putting the link to that in the description below. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this kind of content, and I will be seeing you very soon or rel Depending on whether you see me in my next YouTube video or on Instagram, you will either see me kind of soon or very soon. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and have a good one. Bye.